In today's video, we're gonna try a new approach to learning straw space that might give you the lift you're looking for in your dance music. Stay tuned. Well, hello everybody, I'm Matt Willis, Bagpiper, and on this channel, I make videos to make you a stronger and more confident piper. If you like this kind of content, please think about giving the video a like and subscribing to the channel. I also teach Skype at online lessons if you want more personalized instruction, but more on that later. The Strauss Bay, one of the more peculiar types of music that we as pipers have to play. It is a very ornamented and very pointed type of music. In a previous video, which will be linked either up here or in the description below, I went into all of the different types of Scottish dance music that we typically play on the Highland Pipes, Strauss Bays, Jigs, Reels, Horn Pipes. So if you need a better understanding of those, check out that video. But today, this is all about how we give the Strasbys the type of lift, extending those long notes as much as we need to. But like so many of the approaches I've taken on this channel, we're going to start by, well, slowing things down and opening them up. It will all make sense as we work through the process. In the description below, there's a link to the PDF document we have right here. So go ahead and print this one out. We're actually going to be writing in on it. Or if you have some sort of stylus and you can easily write in on a PDF document, well, Go for that too on a tablet, but I recommend printing it out today. Link again to the document in the description below. The tune we're going to be using my new process on is Orange and Blue, a very popular Strauss Bay with bands and for dancers. It's a great one to have under your fingers. On page one of the document, we have the entire tune as normally written. This is not going to be of too much use to us. We're actually going to dive right into page two in just a second. But I did want folks to have the entire tune to look at as something to reference as we move forward throughout this. And before we dive into this, Strauss Bay playing ain't easy. It is a more sophisticated, more difficult type of pipe tune. If you're still struggling with your basic ornamentation, no harm, no foul, that is just fine. We all have to start somewhere. But if you're having problems with, say, D strikes or burls or what have you, I would get those under control in separate exercises and perhaps a few more simple marches before diving into this. This exercise is assuming you already know the proper timing of your ornamentation where it falls against the bead. And if you need some help with that, Here's a link to the Highland Bagpipe Embellishment Tree. Yeah, it's a poster here, but more importantly, it's a full video where I talk about the timing of each and every one of these ornaments and how they fall before, after, or across the beat. So you should check that out. Link up there or in the description below. A Strauss Bay is in common time. You'll see the C. That means 4-4, four, four, though specifically for Highland Bagpiping, when you see that C, it means Strauss Bay playing. We tend to use the 4-4 four, four to designate the 4-4 four, four marches like Scotland the Brave. To start this process, we are going to find the core melody of the Strauss Bay. And by core melody, I mean what is the longest note in each beat of the Strauss Bay 1 through 4 here. And we're not going to worry about pickup notes for this first section. So you can see we have a short high A at the very top of the tune on line 1 here. We're not going to pay attention to that one because it's a short note. We're only looking for the long notes right now. We can see going on to the first full beat of measure 1, we start with an F, but it's a 16th note F. It's a short F down to a dotted D. That D is going to be the first core melody note. In beat two, it's a bit more straightforward as it's already a quarter note taking the full beat. So it again is a D. Moving on to beat three, we can see we're heading down to a dotted eighth note low A and then a 16th note D. In this case, the dotted eighth note is the longer note making the A, the core melody note we're looking for in beat three. And then for beat four, we're heading back up to a D that's going to be the core melody note ending our first measure. So we can look right at the line underneath where we see core melody, and I've actually taken those four notes and I'm actually spelling them out now in eight four time. I just want to give everything two beats instead of one. So for that first measure, we have a D, a G grace note to D, that G grace note there only to separate the note. Notice as you look through this line, there's minimal gracing. The gracing that's there is only there to separate notes of the same pitch. Then we have a low A, followed by a D. So I have a metronome here set at 96, and I wanna go ahead and try just that first measure, the first four notes, two beats each, and hear what the core melody of this sounds like. Now let's continue working through this line and figure out what the rest of the core melody notes are. You can see I've already done it for you in line one, but as you look down in the rest of the exercise, there's blank pages. Like I said, this might be best to actually print out as opposed to have on a tablet, unless again, you have an easy way of drawing on a PDF. But I'm gonna make it work a little bit with a pen today. You might also wanna to try to find yourself a highlighter. Color doesn't really matter for a neat trick that might be able to help us, but we'll get to that later. 
So moving on to the second measure of line one, we can see we have a dotted eighth note F and that's already giving us the answer. If we see a dotted eighth note, we know that is the long note in that beat because it's taking up three quarters or more of the beat. So the other notes that are shorter than that, it's not that they won't matter in the eventual melody, but for this core melody idea, we're not gonna worry about them. So we can go ahead and pencil in that F as shown here. Then we go up to that G that's a 16th note in the same beat but we won't worry about that as it's a short note. Moving on to the next beat, we have a dotted eighth note high A, so we know that the next chord melody note will be high A. There's an F 16th note, but again, it's a short note. Not gonna worry about it at this step of the process. Then we have a D throw going to a full beat D, so that's going to be our next chord melody note. And then a D strike on another quarter note giving us our final chord melody note for measure two. So we have F, A, D, D. So let's try just that second measure. Before we move on to measures three and four, let's try measures one and two, just the core melody. See how it's going. Let's continue developing the core melody of line one before we worry about anything else. Moving on to measure three, we can see that we are starting with a 16th note C. That's gonna be the short note. We're not gonna worry about that. Heading up to a dotted eighth note E. So that's going to be our first core melody note. Then we're gonna tap an A grace note to another E on a quarter note. So we know our second core melody note is gonna be an E. Then we have a lovely tackum, which is going to be a G grace note on C and a D grace note to a much longer dotted eighth note A. So the melody note in our core melody here will be A. Then hang up to an E doubling on a dotted eighth note E. So that tells us that E being a long note is going to be the core melody note for beat four. And we're gonna go ahead and finish out this line before we play anything else. Moving on to measure four, we see that we have a C on a quarter note. So boom, that's going to be our melody note. Then we have a grip to E, and that E is a dotted eighth note, so we know our next core melody note is gonna be E. Then we have a short C on a 16th note, G grace note to low A on a quarter note, so that quarter note is going to be the core melody note. And then we have a burl to yet another A that's a dotted eighth note before jumping up to a brisk 16th note high A, so the fourth beat of the core melody of this measure is going to be a low A. And given that the burl is all about pinky stuff, I went ahead and just separated these A's with a single tap of the finger. Again, I'm trying to keep the ornamentation out of the core melody. I'm trying to just develop the row of notes, the long notes that we eventually want to hear when we play the tune, the ones that give it the lift. We want to establish that clearly and firmly in our heads and the ornamentation can kind of get in the way of that. Let's try now measures three and four with this metronome. See how it goes. Now that's a fairly brisk speed. Let's go ahead and bring it down and try this whole line. And let's take it all the way down to 80. And let's try all of the core melody line and really get the lift and the long notes we're listening for ultimately in the melody of orange and blue. I would really run that a number of times. Get used to playing it. You're welcome to even try to memorize that line. If this is gonna be one of the tunes you need to know, nothing wrong with memorizing that core melody line. Because again, those are the notes we're really going to want to hear as we move forward and build this into the full speed Strauss Bay we want to play. So the next step in this is developing a half speed version of the tune. Now I recommend you again, write this out though you don't have to, but I recommend you do because it's gonna help you memorize the tune. If you write it out, that's another process. It's another cross-disciplinary way of learning. Taking it out of just our fingers or just our ears, actually writing it out can really help. And how are we gonna write this out? Notice the half speed one, again, is in eight four. And for line one, I do have it written out for you. We're keeping the 16th notes as 16th notes, but we are changing the dotted eighth notes into double dotted quarter notes. A dot means 50% longer, 
So it takes one beat and turns it into a beat and a half. The second dot is 50% of the last dot or another 25%. So in this case, we're holding that beat for one and three quarters beats. We'll talk about the pickup note in just a second, but for right now, starting on that F at the beginning of the measure, we're gonna start with a note that's 25% of the beat or nice and quite quick into another note that's nearly two full beats long. It's 1.75 beats long. Got em. Got em. And to continue this process of writing it out at half speed in the style we want to play it, we're going to turn all of the quarter notes into half notes. We're doubling the length of the quarter notes. So the idea is the long notes are staying as long as we can keep them, very similar to how we approach them in that core melody, but trying to make the short notes as quick as we can make them without our fingers feeling snatchy or overly tight and pinching. We want to have lots of control, uh, deliberate motions, but the quick motions should be quick. But I want to make these short notes feel like they're really just bridging us from one core melody note to the next. I'm not saying they're not part of the melody, but they're less important. And if we really make those long notes come up and float and really drive the melody that we're hearing, that we're delivering through our instrument, it's gonna go a long way to giving you the lift without forcing things to feel longer than they should or really trying to tighten up the short notes. So again, 16th notes remain 16th notes, dotted eighth notes turn into double dotted quarter notes and quarter notes turn into half notes. And you can see in the line here, I have it all spelled out for you already. So I'm gonna turn this metronome on and go ahead and give this a go at 80 beats per minute, half speed, quick notes still quick, long notes really quite long. And then finally, we do have that pickup note at the very top. So we start with a nice short note right before beat one. And this is where the highlighter can come in handy. In a previous video, which will again be linked up here or in the description below, I use the tune Black Bear to demonstrate a method to speed up your pipe tunes. And one of the things I talked about was hidden triplets and snapped notes, and that you can use a highlighter to really help identify where those are. So a snap note is a rhythm that starts with a short note, and it can be super useful to highlight the snapped rhythm. And the reason for that is when you land on that note, you have no time to think. You're gonna get to the short note and you have to get off of the short note to the next note. If you've pre-highlighted the notes that are short on the downbeat, the snapped rhythms, it can go a long way to helping you know they're coming up. So as you can see on the screen right now, that is how I would highlight a snapped rhythm. But notice in this case, I'd go a step further and call this a hidden triplet. Why am I calling it a hidden triplet? Because the note before this short note is yet another short note. But da dum but da dum So in this case, you're gonna start on that A, go to F, and then go straight to D. We actually don't rest or have a moment to think until we get to that D after the high A and the F. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight all three of those. Let's continue through the line before we try to play it and see if we find any more either snap notes or hidden triplets. Looking through the rest of measure one, I don't see any there. Measure two, the downbeat is an F. The next downbeat is really a high A. And then we have the two Ds, so nothing there. Ah, but starting measure three, we can see right there we have a 16th note right at the top of the beat. This one is just a snapped rhythm as the note before it is not short. So we know when we land with that G grace note on C, ta -dee, we're gonna have to come right off that C up to the E. This highlighter can go a long way to helping you know it's coming up. Then we have an E after that, that's the full beat. And then boom, we have that tackum, which is a snapped rhythm with a short note, tackum, get them. Looking through the rest of the line, I don't see anything else that we need to worry about highlighting quite at this point. So. Now we can see we have three places highlighted. And for our purposes, I'm going to go ahead and stop on the A after the burl. That high A at the end of the line is really part of the next phrase. Don't really need to worry about that too much at this moment, but I do want to say I'm stopping on the low A after that burl. And I wouldn't worry about speeding up the metronome until you can play that line exceedingly well. And if 80 is too fast, by all means, slow it down from there. 
But in addition, just because you're now playing the half-speed version, I would not forget about the core melody. In fact, a great way to go about this, and one of the reasons I have it broken up like this, is to try a line at a time through the tune where you do the core melody, and then do the half speed melody. The full speed melody at the very top is really there as a guide to see what we're building up toward. But you can also do two measures at a time of the core melody and then boom, drop down to the half speed version and make sure that those long core melody notes are still being heard and floated upon. So let's try the first two measures with the core melody and then the half speed version of those same two measures. So as I said at the beginning of the video, Strauss Bay playing is a more sophisticated, more difficult type of playing. If you're struggling to get the ornamentation in, you can slow the metronome down, or again, as I said, look at separate exercises to build up your weak areas of ornamentation. Strauss Bay playing is not easy, and there are a number of skills you need to come to the table with, mainly that being clean fingering and ornamentation. This method here is about really expressing and getting the most out of the Strauss Bay you can. From here we have lines two, three, and four, but this is now on you. I want you to go through, find the core melody notes of the piece and start writing them out in the music. That said, we will work through line two together to make sure you have the hang of all of this. Now the first two measures of line two are nearly the same as the first two measures of line one, except for the last beat of measure two. So you can see we have the same first measure entirely, then we have the F, G, A, F, D throw, but rather than a D strike in measure two, we are walking up a G grace note to F on a dotted eighth note. That's gonna change that core melody note to an F. We can see that the first core melody note of measure three of line two is a high A, that's the dotted eighth note. The next one is a high G, that's dotted. We can see the next one is an F, that's the dotted eighth note, and then an E. So we have kind of a nice little walking down scale, A, G, F, E. And then we have a tacum, so a short C down to a longer A. So we know that the low A is gonna be the first core melody note to a B core melody note, and then two Ds. And for the last two, we're gonna separate that with a G grace note. Now let's pencil in at half speed on the bottom line, line two. Again, 16th notes remain 16th notes, Dotted eighth notes become double dotted quarter notes and quarter notes become half notes. Then let's get our highlighter out and let's talk about that high A at the end of line one. I've penciled in a high A at the beginning of line two here. This is the same high A from the end of line one. Just wanted to make it easier for us all to see on quote unquote one line here. We're gonna go ahead and highlight that guy as well as the first two notes of the first measure of line two because just like at the top of the tune, we have one of those hidden triplets, but da -dum. It's, a, it's actually the exact same three melody notes, but da -dum. So again, once you get to that high A at the end of line one, it's highlighted kind of telling you, giving you a bit of warning that you're gonna have to keep going before you can slow down. So you're gonna be hitting that F and going straight into that D. A, burl, but da -dum. Now getting the highlighter out, we can keep looking. How are we doing? Measure two of line two, there was not a hidden triplet or a snapped rhythm. Measure three, there was not until the last beat. If you look, you can see we have a snapped rhythm starting beat one of the fourth measure. So if you see a snapped rhythm, look to the note right before it. If the note right before it is also short, another 16th note, go ahead and include that in 
the shortening. So in this case, we have a hidden triplet straddling the bar line right there. DCA, DCA, patetum, patetum. That will help warn us it's coming up. And with that, we should be able to turn this metronome on and give it a go. I'm gonna start at measure four of line one to give us a running start into that hidden triplet and then straight into line two. Let's go ahead and look at just measures three and four of line two now. As we did before, I'm gonna play just the core melody notes and then go back and try the tune at half speed. Again, those two measures, measures three and four of line two. And if that's feeling too round, if you're finding that it's more like bum, 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 as you're playing it, slow the metronome down or even turn the metronome off for a bit and just try to make sure the long notes are really long. Now it's your turn to work through lines three and four the rest of the tune and figure out both the core melody and the half speed version. The next part of this process is to not speed up the tune until you have it fully learned and memorized at half speed. Think about this Strauss Bay right now being more of a slow air. I want you to really establish this melody, both the core melody and the half speed melody. I want these really entrained in your fingers in your mind's ear about how this tune sounds. I am not worried about getting this fast. If we can play this with really long drawn out notes as the metronome goes up, you're going to want to continue to hear those long notes being long. If we speed it up too quickly, many Strauss bass turn into reels. They get really round. I mean, that's kind of fun, but that is not Strauss Bay playing. When you can play that cleanly, reliably, slowly, and with nice long notes, good, short, but not overly snatchy notes, go ahead and try it at full speed. I'm gonna keep it at 80, and we'll see how this goes, trying to play the same melody, now at the full speed, top line version of the dude. Many of you learning Strauss bass will have heard about strong, weak, medium, weak pulsing in a Strauss bay. And I feel that's just beyond the scope of the beginning Strauss bay player to try to get under control. I feel at this point, the best you can do is try to hold your long notes as long as you can. The short notes should be short, but not so short that you are not under control of what the fingers are doing. So as short as possible, well, yes, but as possible, not beyond possibility where you're now no longer playing cleanly or accurately. And ultimately, your ability to play the short notes short and keep your embellishments in time is going to be what limits the final speed of your Strauss Bay playing. Not everyone's gonna be able to get their Strauss Bay up to 120, 124, some of the speeds you might hear the top flight pipers playing, and that's okay. And if you don't get there, you're still playing absolutely fantastic melodies that are well expressed, even if they're a little bit down tempo from where the pros might be playing them. There are some Strauss Bay rhythms that we did not go over in this. This is for basic Strauss Bay playing, but there are things like Strauss Bay triplets, which are slightly different than hidden triplets. But fear not, there will be a Strauss Bay triplet video following this one up. As soon as it's ready, there'll be a link in the description below and here on screen. So stay tuned for that. But this should be a good start, a good primer to get a Strauss Bay under your fingers, 
going well with the core melody clear, those long notes being nice and long, and that you want to express them, not because you're being forced to hold them long, but because your ear wants to hear those long notes because it's established them as the melody notes of the tune. Well, thank you so much for watching, everybody. If you got something out of the video, please think about giving it a like, subscribing to the channel, and commenting below with any thoughts you might have. And a big shout out to the members of my Patreon community. You'll see their names now scrolling up. These are folks that support the channel on a monthly basis. I'd love to add your name to this list. There are perks you get for joining at the various tiers, but the most important thing is, well, the support they give the channel. Thank you. I also teach Skype and online lessons. Go ahead and head over to www.commandyourbagpipe.com or email me at the address you see right here, and we'll get you going. I'm working with folks from all over the planet, and I hope to work with you soon. I also have a line of Command Your Bagpipe merchandise, like this lovely hoodie, but there's also the Highland Bagpipe Ornament Tree, linked to the merch store down below. Well, thank you again for watching, everybody. I'm Matt Willis, and until next time, cheers.